what's up? Welcome back. Today, ooh, this is a fun one. <laughs> so, my bad. Today, we are in an Icon Thriftmaster, specifically. This one is in 1952, and the eighth TR that we have built thus far. This one has a bunch of unique traits. If you're familiar with the model, you'll know that in general terms, they kind of all come the same way as far as options and equipments. Um, we offer multiple stances for static ride height, so you can go pretty darn slammed or you can go pretty moderate. We offer a manual tranny or an automatic tranny. We do variations on the bed wood and the leather every time, and then clients can pick satin or chrome finished trim. And that's usually pretty much it because the power windows, the digital audio system, the power door locks, and yada, 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 all that stuff comes standard. However, this one is for a repeat client. He's a bit of a lead foot. So we did a couple extra fun things. First and foremost, it is the first manual transmission equipped Thriftmaster, which is a welcome to sight, dare I say. These trucks are so much fun to drive. I've said it before, but I'm gonna say it again. They're really more of a sports car with a vintage truck body hiding its sports carness. And they drive, handle, and feel like that, and they accelerate super quick because they're pretty darn light. In this case, the extra fun is that there is uh, even more unnecessary copious horsepower. So we are running a General Motors LSA engine. So that is the intercooled and supercharged version of the LS that we more traditionally run. It is an E-Rod packaged motor. So it comes with all of the wonderfully conscious and responsible environment control devices, which really is a good thing because A, it's not stinky, and B, this isn't like the 90s where you had a smog pump and EGR and all sorts of crap. Really, all you have is a EVAP monitor, charcoal canister, wideband oxygen sensors, and catalytic converters. So there's really no reason not to just go ahead and be environmentally responsible. Power-wise, uh, totally, again, not needed. The 420 horse LS did just fine. But having said that, well, 551 torque, I think 560 horse LSA just steps it up. So that combined with the manual tranny, <laughs> this truck is just so rowdy and so much fun. On the exhaust system, on this one, we did our usual mandrel bent TIG welded stainless. It's a pretty short system. It's dual, it's ceramic coated, and it's just got tons of snap, crackle, and pop the way these LSAs are too. See if you can hear it here. Kind of back pressure personality to them. There it is. So uh, what else makes it fun? This is the first one with the new option, which is the independent rear suspension. I cannot rave about it enough. It's Art Morrison's sort of latest generation that they've been applying to many of their chassis. It's just the first time we've had the opportunity to do it in a Thriftmaster. You get about five degrees of four wheel steering at the most extreme driving uh, styles. Other than that, it tracks beautifully and it just sops up all those road imperfections. It's a lot less drama going on. We're running the tighter ratio rack and pinion power steering. The brakes are also the Icon Brembo, first time in a Thriftmaster. Well, that's not true. We also did it on that uh, cool derelict GMC TR that we did recently. Um, so six piston front cowlies, four piston rear, uh, dedicated caliper for the parking brake, and we're running the e-stop, so that's an electric parking brake with the dash control switch. For audio system, we have the usual, which means we have the Pioneer NEX 8100 series head unit, with CarPlay, Bluetooth, CD, HD radio, reverse camera integration, and all that fine stuff. Of course, we have power windows. Um, this is one of the uh, 
first vehicles to get the new power window gizmo electronic thingamajigger that we spent a while developing. So now you keep the analog power window control, right? And you simply nudge down for down and up for up. The new bonus is now you nudge twice and they all go down and you nudge twice up and they all go up, which is just a little tiny thing, but a really nice convenience to have in my opinion. The sun visors are the Icon Aerospace visors that uh, we first became aware of when I was uh, able to peek around in the cabin of a client's Learjet. And then um, the dash has the normal Icon articulating CNC aluminum dash panel that continues to the left of the gauges to allow for the fourth climate vent and then obviously in the middle you can actuate that panel when you need to negotiate with the pioneer unit but when you just don't want to see it you can just shut it up and close it all of the dash knobs are under the dash in our own design panel there that takes the rib lines from the stamp dash and flows and continues them down to that sub panel you have controls there for lights, wipers, fan, vent, and temp. And then to the left, that larger black knob with the V on it controls the stock cow vent, which is really nice to have. They work really well. Um, gauges, my aesthetic design manufactured by our buddies at Dakota. Those indicate uh, parking brake and check engine light and all system status that you might require along with uh, zero to 60 and quarter mile timer trip meter and odo of course um, for the rugs on this one we again did the hard garden square weave this time in a dark charcoal gray for the seating it's the seat you're used to seeing in these trucks with the split bucket back the bench bottom the drop down armrest center console and then the speaker for bass is hiding behind that. And then you have two full call audio three-way speakers up in front in custom pods under the dash. Cup holders are facilitated via Mercedes. We stole the G-Wagon sort of basketball hoop style cup holder. Those work really nice. And I didn't want to put it here because if it's on the console and you flip it up, you're going to forget and then you're going to pour it all over the speaker and that just sucks. The leather on this truck is from our buddies at Relicate. Relicate's really fun to work with because I'm able to be very precise about everything from the grain texture to the pull-up, to the temper, to the thickness, to how black is black. And they spec this out at our client's request and it, it feels really nice, it's really good hand. In fact, that reminds me, I have to build the client a custom little baggie because in the bed, where four of what would normally have been just the carriage bolts for the, the stainless runners that pulled the wood in, we machine these cool uh, marine tie-down anchors. So you can remove them just by push-pull, and I gotta make a bag so uh, he can store those in the uh, glove box without having to listen to them. A little bit more about the acid of this truck. You'll notice that the Icon branding is subtly done by acid etching the tailgate prior to primer and paint. So it's tone on tone. It's not in your face, but it's there if you're looking for it. Tail lights are super cool. Same one we've been running since day one, done by our buddies at Greening Automotive. Beautifully machined, really nice sort of pyramid uh, optic pattern on the LED pattern, so the lens has like some really cool depth to it. You'll also notice at the end of the bed rails, we have the reverse lights, and that filled what was otherwise a fairly useless cavity that was difficult to get good paint finish in, so we're happy to have done that. It's, uh, it's subtle, but again, I think overall, it really adds to the value. You'll notice, that the wheels on this truck are a bit different, something new that I've been trying it out. Uh, they're basically, I'm calling them the artillery wheel, and I think I'm gonna make it a new option. I originally did it at the request of this client. Thank you for your good idea, sir. What do you guys think? Should I make these uh, standard wheel that's available on the Thrift Masters and maybe the derelicts and reformers? I do believe I shall. Um, 
What's nice about them is they're reminiscent of sort of the mostly pre-World War II uh, Chevy and Dodge and pretty much everyone used them artillery style wheel but of course they're machined and forged aluminum and they let the big sexy brake calipers peek out just a little bit. The hubcaps are the same ones that we always run. Um, this client did the satin brushed nickel trim package so therefore the hubcaps are brushed satin nickel as well. Gosh, what else can I tell you? Uh, Tri-5 reproduction steering wheel from the Bell Air, reduced diameter, improves the ergonomics. We've got tilt function for the steering column, all of the dash knobs and the column knobs and switch gear, um, window regulators, door handles, armrests, seat hardware, uh, all my design, all machined by Icon, all in aluminum. There is no plastic anywhere. We've got USB power port in the dash. We've got this nifty lighting here. That's something recent that we've added to help you see the function indication on the dash knobs at night. Alcantara headliner. And uh, how could I forget Bedwood? Those of you familiar with me and my antics with the Thrift Masters are used to seeing unique wood in each truck. Generally, I'll try and tie the wood to the specific client's tastes or interests. So like we did one thrift master for a professional baseball player. So we did Louisville Slugger Ashwood. We did another one in Quarter Sawn White Oak just because I liked it and it looked cool and we fumed it. Then we did one in Shushugiban finished hardwood. We did one in Koa. Now this one, the client is into antiquities. So we did a little bit of research and my buddy at Chelsea and Mead in the Carolinas, who does my bespoke woodwork, is actually, his specialty is staircases. And this guy's work, like chicka boom, crazy cool. Well, when we were talking about what we should do for this truck, he helped us find this wood. So this is carbon date certified 5,000 year old black peat oak found in a bog in Ireland. I tell you, no lies. It is so cool. It's a bitch to work with. It basically machines and cuts like steel. It is incredibly heavy and dense. The weight became a benefit for the ridiculous amount of horsepower. It helps keep the ass planted. And I mean, this truck is so fast. I haven't even made it through wide open throttle into sixth gear, but I can tell you at about 115 miles an hour when you shift into fifth gear at wide open throttle, all gears one through five, it gets a little hairy and uh, leaves a little rubber behind. It's so much fun. Um, but yeah, this wood was just kind of the icing on the cake. It's just such a really neat element to all the layers of story that we try and create when we are fortunate enough to build these trucks for people. So that's probably enough. I've been blabbing for quite a while. I will just simply thank you as always for taking the time to watch these videos. We really appreciate the support. If you have any questions, feel free to call us. Old School Telephone, 818-280-3333. The website, of course, is Icon4x4, Instagram, Icon4x4. And if you're still with me, how about just one little last bit, one little just unnecessary copious burnout, right? It just seems like, I don't know, the responsible thing to do. I'm on a closed, well, not closed, but a street with no traffic, and it's just too much fun. So let's give it a little bit. That's just too much fun. Can't believe this is a job. Thank you guys. See you next time.